All right, so this is our um, third form transformation. So from declarative, which is a statement of fact, um, to an interrogative, which is a question, okay? So we, um, there are two types of questions uh, in the English language. Um, and if you look on the back of the packet, it kind of explains like how you would take a declarative sentence and make it into a question. So all of those rules, kind of understanding how we make a question will help um, when we take the question in our second grammar unit and we turn it back into the implied statement of fact, okay? And this is useful also um, just in terms of analysis uh, for AP language, um, looking at a question and recognizing maybe some of the underlying assumptions, especially with the modal auxiliaries that people might be making. Um, all right, so we're going to take the sentence, transform it back to its declarative form, then we'll chart it out and identify the pattern. So there, there's a couple of little like like questions that you have to kind of go through um, in order to in order to figure out the interrogative. So the first thing we look at is. Is this a sentence that can be answered with yes or no? So what have some sports reporters called Oriole Park? Yes. Okay, now that doesn't make any sense. So if it's not a question that could be answered with yes or no, then you skip that and you move on to, okay, this must then be a question that starts with a WH question word. And I know how is in there, it doesn't start, but you, you get the idea. So what, who, whom, which, whose, when, where, why, or how. And so in this case, we do have one of those WH question words, what, okay? So if this question begins with that kind of a word, we replace the question word with an answer to the question. It can be a generic, like someone, something, somehow, um, somewhere, or it can, you can make up a specific one, it doesn't really matter, either will be fine. So just be aware of whatever you make up, you're going to need to chart out. So simpler is sometimes easier. All right, so what have some sports reporters called Oriole Park? Just answer the question, well they've called it a happy place or place that with a noun phrase, right? You could say something. Some sports reporters have called Oriel Park something, okay? Um, so a happy place is what I'm gonna kinda use. So I've replaced the question word. So now I need to do the next check. If the WH question word is not the subject of the sentence, well, how do I know what the subject of the sentence is? Find the verb. Called, have called technically, is my verb, okay? So who's doing the calling, some sports, so it's not my subject. So if it's not the subject, I need to define my verb and I need to move my subject before the verb. Well, what does that mean? Well, so see how my sub my verb here have called is like split up. This isn't an interrupting adverb. This is actually a whole noun phrase, my subject that's in the middle of my verb, okay? And that's what happens when you have a not uh, when when you have a question, okay? You you move the subject in between your verb. If there's only one word in the verb, you have to add something between before your subject, and that's um, all those kinds of rules are on the back um, of your packet. So move the subject before my verb. Okay, so some sports reporters is going to go here. Then I need to take the replaced information, it says, and put it back where it makes sense, taking into consideration the function of the rest of the words, the expected order, etc. So some sports reporters have called a happy place, Oriole Park, and that doesn't make sense. Oriole Park, a happy place. So this little happy place thing renames Oriole Park, right? What have they called it? So it's gonna be, it's gonna essentially be an object complement because Oriole Park is gonna be my direct object. So it's gonna go all the way at the end. So now I'm gonna write my sentence out in the expected declarative form kind of, um, kind of order. So I start with my subject, some sports reporters have called, right, don't forget to put all the pieces of your sentence um, back together, Oriole Park, a happy place. Okay, so that's my rewritten sentence. All the same stuff, right? just one thing that's a, an addition because I replaced my WH word. All right, so then I chart it out. So have called is my verb. It's 
some sports reporters, noun phrase one, Oriole Park and a happy place. I'm going to split those up because those are two noun phrases, but they do refer to the same thing. So Oriole Park, a happy place, talking about the same thing. So this is my subject. I know I have a transitive verb because I have the noun phrase two. What have they called Oriole Park? It's my direct object. And a happy place is the renaming, right, that is that cause is caused by my verb. Okay, and that's what has to happen. It has to be renamed as a result of the verb for it to be the object complement. With a noun phrase, object complement, this ends up being pattern 10. Okay, all right, let's do one more. Um, and then in class, we'll do three, four, and five, and six through 10 will be your independent practice. So might the suspect's alibi have been a lie? Can I answer that question with yes or no? Yes, it was a lie, right? So since it's a yes or no question, it says find the verb. The subject should be in the middle of or after the verb. Move the subject before the verb. Okay, that's, that's what my directions kind of say there. So find my verb. Well, have been, don't forget modal auxiliary, might. So might have been is my verb. The subject should be in the middle. Yep, it is. What are we talking about? We're talking about the subject's alibi. So move it before the verb. <clears throat> I'm going to put it over here and rewrite. The subject's alibi. <coughs> Might have been a lie, period. Okay, no more question marks because we're changing it back to a declarative statement of facts, right? And this is what we mean by assumptions, right? Could the suspect's alibi have been a lie? Could have, right? Should the suspect's alibi have been a lie? Right now we're talking about a different speaker, a different situation, right? And that's, that's where the analysis piece comes in. All right, so let's chart it out. Might have been is our verb. Suspect's alibi, noun phrase one, a lie same as the alibi. So that's also noun phrase one, okay? So when we think about what kind of verb we have, we know that alibi is our subject. The main verb is always kind of what, what you focus on. And in this case, our main verb is be. So this is a be verb, and we have our subject complement that's a noun phrase. So this one's pattern three, okay?